Well, it is a Saturday morning and a beautiful one in Jackson and West Tennessee. Time to get those things around the house in the proper order. This is Tricks of the Trade. John Allen, your host this morning. Good morning, Mr. John. Everything's going well today? Yeah, everything's going. It's going. I'm not sure well. It's too early to tell this. this thing. Well, that, that, uh, that well's a deep hole, especially as... <laughs> as uh, as hot as it is, you got to find a cool spot way down there. Way down there. Yeah, it's going to be hotter and hotter tomorrow than today, and uh, we've got some rain coming in first of the week, so it'll it'll cool off again for too long. Well, maybe I'll have time to get that roof finished before it rains. <laughs> <laughs> be, a good idea. be a good idea. Tricks of the trade this morning. All the lines are open for you. We uh, have the call-in line up and running at 731-891-6161. That'll put you on the phone line right in to John, or you can text us on the Victory Honda text line at 731-410-7560. And as always, we are sponsored by, on Saturday mornings, by West End Fence Company, Economy Siding and Windows, and Quality Outdoor Products. Three great local businesses. Absolutely, and glad to have them all in, in uh, my little company portfolio to where we can uh, do business with them, and we invite all of you all out there to do the same thing. Absolutely, absolutely. So what's... Uh, we on the Thursday show we talked about one of your adventures a little bit this week the uh, the uh, uh, Pat Boone autograph model walk in tub. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, buddy. Yeah, did you get did you get his drain fixed? We found the drain. The drain arrived about four o'clock yesterday afternoon. We're gonna set that up for Monday morning. All right. We're gonna tilt that puppy over and put a new drain on the bottom, and and we got the drain opened up, so now the water ought to go whoosh. Yes. Get out of there, so he won't freeze to death. <laughs> he uh, he actually turned his thermostat up, which means he made it warmer right. in there, uh, just so he wouldn't get so cold sitting there butt naked in his tub that he couldn't use waiting for the water to get out of there. Yeah, now that, that's uh, there are a lot of things that I don't think I would like about him, and that would be at the top of my list. Well, it's just things you don't think about. Yeah, the, well, they, the, uh, but the white coats should have thought about. Well, they should have, but, you know, that would mean they'd have to slip their coat off to think about it. And <laughs> they don't true. do that very often. This is true. They love to sit in their little ivory tower and, and ponder about things mm -hmm. that uh, are more technical. Much like government. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Come out and see how it works in the real world. Yeah. Isn't that the truth? It, it's just, you know, I'm sitting here this morning. I, I decided I was going to flip on the news. Yeah. And, of course... You hear a little bit about COVID oh, yeah. and all that mess going on right now, which is, is serious. I've it had serious. several friends this week that's kind of popped up with that ugly thing. And then in between that and the wildfires and Britney Spears. Yes. Which I care nothing about. Which part? The wildfires? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it doesn't affect me that much over here, but, you know, it is a little hazy because yeah, of yeah, it. I, yeah, can, I can sympathize and with those people over there, but oh yeah, yeah. I no, just that, that is, that I is don't want to know any. I, I, you know, it seems like half the news hour was taken up on uh, Britney Spears and yep. and uh, I don't care about her or Kardashians either one. No, and no, uh, no, they have no importance in my life. At least she can sing a little. Kardashians are famous for being famous. That's all. That's all they. I do. always wondered what that was all about. They, they have nothing. Except the way they look, which is what? which is manufactured for the most part. Yeah, how that one got that huge tiny? I don't know. <laughs> got to be a zipper in there it's somewhere, where they stuffing something in there. I don't know what that's all about, but that's anyway. Your, that's your Tempur-Pedic. <laughs> I wonder uh, if there's a, a purple stamp on the bottom of that. <laughs> I haven't figured out that purple mattress just yet either. It looks like you're laying on a on a on a little tiny egg crate to me. You got one of those? No, I don't. Uh -uh. Oh. I wouldn't. I wouldn't buy one for that reason, you know. And uh, I, I, I do have Tempur Pedic at this point, but I'm about to swap that in. It's 12 years old, so we're going to uh, a different brand of the similar type of mattress. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Well. It's supposed to be cooler. It's supposed to be. Well. I'll let you know. You just got to stay cool. I mean, we're in those what they call those dog days right now. Yes, we are. And, I want to. Even and, the dogs don't like it. Yeah, it it, uh, but I but you know what I have a hankering for this time of the year. What is that? A fried bologna sandwich. Oh baby, <laughs> I don't know why, but I get on the search trying to find 
a good bologna sandwich. Yeah. Now, I don't know who insulted the sandwich business by, uh, you know, people get a piece of loaf bread and and you go out here to the store and you get this, uh, uh, I don't even know what you call it. There's all different kinds of bologna, but that, yeah. that I grew up on that imitation bologna <laughs> with the red thing around it. Yeah, I thought you peel, kind of, it, peel it off at the last minute. Yeah, there yeah. you go. But uh-huh. then they got to slice it up. Yeah. And you could read a paper through it. Yeah. And then they come out with a so-called thick. Now, why people don't have enough sense just put two slices on or three? That's exactly what I'm thinking, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, it, I, I, I've been going to a, a couple of places. When I used to, back in my younger days, there was a there was a grocery store out here called Roland's Grocery. Mm-hmm. Yep. That uh, I'd go by, and there was the sweetest little old lady in there that armed with a butcher knife <laughs> that would take a, a log of bologna uh-huh. and... And cut you off a slice to make you a bologna sandwich. It might be an inch and a half on one side, <laughs> quarter on the other, but it didn't make any difference. You yeah. got your money's worth. Well, now the restaurants have bought into this uh, cuisine. Yes. And and you can go out here to, like, Latham's, for instance. Now, they got a fine bologna sandwich out there, mm-hmm. too. Yep. I like mine a little spicy. Yeah. So I wander around, and every time I see bologna sandwich on the menu, I have to order one just to check them out. That's exactly. You know, uh, Red Bones up here has got a pretty have, good bologna good sandwich. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Um, Big House has a pretty good bologna sandwich. Get a little slaw, a little hot sauce. Little, on yeah, that yeah, nice. yeah. But it, I, you know good. where I found my best one, and this is what a place you wouldn't think. Where is that? And, and, and it's in downtown Jackson. Really? And it's over a little place uh, on Main Street called uh, Baker's Brothers. Oh, yeah. Baker yeah. Brothers Barbecue. Yeah, right yeah. across from yeah, yeah, yeah. Holmes, Rich, and Sigler. Uh-huh. But I don't know what they do to it, but they actually fry it. Probably. I mean, it comes out toasted. Oh, man. All the way around. Now that I and, like. And they put the uh, hot sauce on it and then the slaw. Right. And a piece of bread to where you bite into it and it just oozes out everywhere. There you go. But... Uh, I have uh, had my bologna fix this week. Have you? From and there, it, right? and and, I, and I'm there, but uh, you know that they're not paying for a sponsorship here, and I don't know if I'm supposed to do what I just did. Yeah, I just well, I just like to pass things on that are good. Yeah, well, and we're keeping it local, and that's what we're about. Well, that, that's why. But that that's pretty good, and and that, and I've been a little nostalgic. Uh, you get the sounds, mm-hmm. you know, you know, getting up. I get up early in the morning. I'm up about 5.30 every morning and kind of wandering around and looking for my socks or my drawers wherever fuzz butt drug them off <laughs> the <laughs> night before. I'm talking about my puppy dog. That's right, the dog, yeah. <laughs> and um, she has a tendency to hide her bone in one of my shoes and trot off across the room with it. But anyway, uh, you know, you get up in the morning and you hear the, the, the doves or the whippoorwills yeah. and, and stuff like that. But I never noticed I missed anything until yesterday, and I heard it. I went out on a service call out in the country, and I like going out in rural areas because they forgot all this technology. They just <laughs> true, and that's a good thing. That, yeah, it can be. Yes. But but all of a sudden I went up to the door and I knocked on the door, just like I normally do. And and here here he comes, little old bitty fellow, kind of grandpaish. Mm-hmm. Like me. Like me. Yeah. And and I reached down and I grabbed a handle and opened the door. And there it was. That creak. That sound of yeah. the spring on a screen door. Slightly rusted. Slightly rusted. Yeah. Hinges right. squeaking a little bit. And, man, you talk <laughs> about flashbacks. Yeah, man. I went all the way back to Grandpa and Grandma's house. Yep. and uh, And then it course you look over there where the spring was and it done gnawed a little corner <laughs> off the edge of the door uh-huh. where it slide back and forth across it. oh yeah and uh you never want to oil that no you, you just don't want that to get away that's 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 but, your, uh, what they call that these days patina patina yeah that's patina like on an antique when it gets all gooky looking well that's, that's a patina. city term we just call it rust it's rust it, yeah, it's, it's, yeah it's it's a gnawed out place with rust in it yeah yeah it uh he kind of drags across that uh, edge of that door, and, and 
Yeah. It's just the way it was. Yeah. It, uh, you know how you can tell if you got a real good, strong spring on a screen door? How's that? If you get a kid running as fast as he can go, hit it with your left hand on the way out. If it's a left hand open door, hit it with your left hand on the way out. And about the second or third step, as you keep on running, you hear that. That's right. <laughs> and it don't go, blah, 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 it goes, bam, and it's closed. Well, it's got to, it's got to slam shut. That's yep, just part that's of exactly it. That's exactly right. Otherwise, flies get in the house real quick. <laughs> it's <very> quick. <laughs> They are quick. Well, yeah. Anyway, I, I don't know why that just pops in my mind, but it's just you, you're dealing with things in August, and it's hot. And uh, I was there to replace his entry door. He had had a little burglar, somebody that wasn't supposed to have been there. Hmm. And then we also had to, uh, well, it was an attempt. <laughs> an attempt. I say that because on the other side of the door in the wall yeah. is buckshot. Hmm. Uh, the the burglar was thwarted off. <laughs> <laughs> was dusted. <laughs> he was he had his honey dusted and filled with buckshot, little sprayed out on the wall right there. Looked like little BBs hit it. Yeah. He had bird what uh, bird, bird shot, shot in yeah. it. Yeah, number seven, number I six, imagine seven. he's still burning and scooting across the rug like uh, an old hound dog. Guarantee it. But anyway, he didn't make it in, but uh, they, they did tear his door up a little bit because he had a little thin panel in there, and it, it busted it out. But, right. you know, they make doors. Now, used to, you could change a door out on the inside and not have to mess with the frame, and, and you could cut it to fit the threshold, right? and you could leave the screen door on if you wanted to. You just had to have a carpenter that had two ounces of sense that knew how to use a, a chisel right. and a hammer and a, and a screwdriver and to, to, to adjust and fit the door to the existing opening. Right. You can't do that much anymore. And, uh, and that's kind of the, one of the first subjects I wanted to get into this morning because what the things come in threes. I'm sure I'm going to get some more next week, but people will come and say, I'm ready to change my door. And uh, I'll say, okay. And then I have to break the news to them. It's not as easy as just changing the door only out anymore. Yeah, you can't just tap out the little uh, little yeah. things in the hinge and stick a new one up there, can Th you? That's right, because number one, the hinges don't come on it. Yep. If they did come on it, it could be from a different manufacturer, so they won't fit. They'd be in the wrong spot. Your door lock will not be in the same spot yep. and there's a good chance that the hole that was there before won't be the same size hole that you had on your new yeah. one so when you're going out to put in a new door i hate to admit this but i'm just going to go ahead and tell you it would be more economical to buy a complete door unit unless for some reason you've got some kind of door that you've Maybe you you found a used door or yeah, an antique door, yeah, yeah that you want to do. Then you're going to have to find somebody that uh, has enough craftsmanship in them that they can retrofit things to the new door. But you know, thresholds are, are a, a very uh, touchy situation. Uh, most everybody had a separate threshold on their door. Uh, when it was put in, if it's of any age, it was normally a little aluminum threshold with a little vinyl bulb in the top of it. Mm -hmm. Or it just could be a board down there, and maybe you had a little outside sweep on your door that brushed up to get the ants from crawling under there. True. But uh, doors now, if you buy the a door, and say you want one 36 inches wide and you want it uh, 80 inches tall, you're only going to get one that's 79 inches tall and 35 and a half inches or sometimes three quarter inches wide and it won't fit. You, you got to modify it and got, adjust it. I got to ask the obvious question. Okay, why? Why? Because <laughs> why they can't. Can. But I mean, why not? Why can you not get one? You, if you order an 80 inch, why would they send you a 79? Or is that just the way they're made well, now? Because two befores are not two inches by four inches. Oh, it's yeah. called the nominal size because everyone's adjusting to the new thresholds, which 
99% of the time are made onto the door frames right, now. Right, right. Yeah, I've seen that. So the fact that they are mass manufactured and not sold individually. There you go. There you go. It's easier just to go get a complete door unit and take the entire thing out. Right. And put a whole new one in. And the only thing you got to worry about at that point is the thickness of your jam and what kind of molding goes on the outside, such as brick mold or whatever type you have. And then the inside trim, you'll have to change that out. Right. So. And then people, I would, does the same thing apply to uh, like a glass storm door or a glass or a screen storm door that you would put over your entry door on the out not not the old timey screen door but i'm talking about one that's got a glass panel in it do they come as all as one unit also they do yeah, cause, uh, cause you you looked at mine we've got a problem with mine do you? yeah it's it was a thing 16 years old we put it in when we when we bought the house uh -huh. okay and uh it's on the west side so it gets hot 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 in the afternoon and when the rain comes out of the west it blows up in there on it which is what it's there for, you know, to keep the rain out of the house. But we noticed that uh, down at the, in the corners, it wasn't, wasn't looking quite right. And that thing is, is coming apart. The door is literally coming. You wouldn't looked at it. Uh, you got a, it was rotted it's inside. Like, yes, yeah, like sawdust coming out of there. It is. It was, it was a metal clad door. Yep. You had metal over your sawdust. And it, and it, and it actually rusted. Uh, the sawdust um, rusted. Well, the, the <laughs> sawdust was rotted, yeah. and it oxidized against the metal. Yep, and that's why. And it kind of puckered up and got the rough looking right there, yep. and it's not what it used to be. No, but it's going to be because i got to get another one, and yeah. I'll call you whenever I get around to that. Yeah, it. Uh, but it is. So, uh, my, my point is things are not – you can't easily change those out, and and uh, you got to know some key factors when right. you go – to order a door, you got to know what hand it is. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, if you're standing in the door and the door swings away from you, mm -hmm. if it swings to the right, it's a right hand. If it swings to the left, it's a left hand, which is opposite of your storm door. That's right. It storm is, doors yeah. go by hinge, not hand. And a left hand is a right hinge. <laughs> Go I, figure that one out. I got it. But it, but they go by the same symbols. It's why you got to look. It's R H or R L, uh -huh. which is right hand, left hand, or left. Oh, I got that right. wrong. Uh, right hand R H or left hand L H. Right. But if you look on the scr uh, screen or storm doors, L H means left hinge, hinge. not left hand which is opposite so you got to watch that when you yeah, go pick I them would, up i would think so and uh but my point is you really talk it out because if you go to a big box store they don't sometimes necessarily understand that terminology yeah and uh i would think most of your buyers don't either well, I know, but at least you can get a little educated on it if they're listening to the show. I'm trying to tell them right exactly. now. See, we're educating you right we, now. We, we're educating you. So, but but size is critical. But the but the one thing you got to realize that's most important in all is the thickness or the width of your jam. Most, if you go to the store and buy a unit, which you would be have a tendency to run out there and get one, and just pick it up already made. And you get home and you go to put it in the wall and find out you need another inch or two of jam <laughs> to make it as thick as what your wall was. Right. So you need to measure your old jam because you may have to modify it and add a little width to that jam in order to get everything uh, properly put in. Yep. And if you get one that's got the jam and the door and everything's made together, most of them are already bored for a lock. So yep. you won't have any trouble with your locks. If you buy just a blank door and you are able to mortise the hinges and put them up there, and it was full side where you, sized where you could cut it and let it go and meet your threshold, uh, chances are the you got to make sure you put the lock exactly where the other one was, get that hole. And, uh, and then one of my favorite little boo-boos, 
that I learned the hard way a long, long a time long ago time. when I was first starting out. When you take a door down yeah, and you're cutting it, yes, be careful because you'll tote it out there and put it on the sawhorse and you will have very carefully and methodically measured that door and you check your measurements again mm-hmm. and you have scribed that door getting ready to cut it off. Maybe it's a new door. Maybe you're just cutting the door off because you put new carpet in the house and it's thicker. Right. Be careful. Be careful. Make sure. Because you, <laughs> I learned this the hard way, and I still laugh about it. I, I took a beautiful door. It was a uh, solid fur door, oh. stain grade, and uh, put it. Up, took it down, measured it, cut it, went and put it back up. Went to open it up, and I saw, uh-oh, what's going on here? The door's still dragging on the carpet. But I looked up, and the top of it, it was shorter. <laughs> and, and I could see into the other room. I cut the wrong end off cut the, the wrong door. End off. I, I, it happens. There's no telling how many other doors have had to be bought for that very reason. Oh, I'm telling Especially you. Especially with us do-it-yourselfers, you know. Oh, it, it is. You really got to watch that stuff because it... It's the stupid factor that'll catch yeah, up on you the whole time. all the time. And try as you might, you can't just flip it over. <laughs> and you can't tack that piece back on either. No. <laughs> uh, now wait a minute. They got this stuff called alien tech. Never mind. Never mind. It's back on the air. I know. I know. Oh, and they got other uses for it too. Oh, really? They got it cut up in little pieces and yeah. showing how you can dot it on there. Well, that might work. Hey, and that big giant on the TV, too, that's yeah. got that... Uh, what's rubber, that? The rubber boat. <laughs> yeah, the rubber boat guy. Who, uh, who, what is that stuff called? Uh, flex tape. Flex, flex tape. Flex seal. And flex seal and mm-hmm. flex spray. You know? They got competitors now. Oh, really? The gorilla has got in the game. It has. I saw that, yeah. You got gorilla spray out there now. Yeah, I, I, I would trust that. The only so, thing I don't like about gorilla glue is you have to. it has to be activated with a little bit of water yeah and if you're not careful what you think is a little bit of water will spread all over what you're working on well i use spit there you go it doesn't run as bad does it no you and and I even use if perrier you, myself well if you have a <laughs> you know it's, it's if, if you have a tendency to slobber a little bit <laughs> you can get a little stream run down the side right. and get yeah. right on That's there right. works Just out real good lift it up there and hit but it yeah it <laughs> Makes no sense that you have to put water with the glue to make it to activate it. To yeah. get activated, yeah, yeah. but yeah. Uh, we we uh, one of the one of my grandkids accidentally dropped a little uh, uh, ceramic spoon that goes with a cup that they like to drink from. Uh-huh. And of course, she was all torn up about it and everything. He broke that little spoon, which is no more than two and a half, three inches. So I said, I can fix that. Me and the gorilla are gonna fix that. There you go. I got it back together. Good for the you. only thing, the only thing I've got to do now, and I hadn't figured out exactly how to do it, but I know what I got to do. I got it back together, and it's straight, but there's a little bitty, little bitty bit of glue at each one of the joints because of the way the Gorilla Glue expanded. Razor blade. That's what I either that or some very, very small grit sandpaper. Careful with that; you'll hurt the porcelain on that. That's true. Take, take a little utility knife or any kind of razor blade instrument, yeah. exacto knife, whatever you call, it, yeah. and you can uh, you can carve that thing right off there, and it works good. Cool. Another trick of the trade, there right go. there. Got a text coming in on the Victory Honda text line. A millionaire mobile home man once told me what to uh, what to uh, what do I say when customers ask about big gaps on the doors? He gleamed as big as his 350-pound frame. It's a safety feature we provide for all of our customers. <laughs> Mr. Haney, Green Acres type of guy. Still better uh, than the white coats at Lowe's, sad to say. <laughs> oh, wow. Remember Mr. Haney? Oh, I do. I do. Oh, man, he could sell anything. Yep. yep. <laughs> I, one of my favorite exchanges and him and, and uh, Oliver, Oliver Wendell Douglas. Oliver. He, he pulled up in the truck. <laughs> And, uh, and he showed him something he had in the truck, and Mr. Douglas says, Mr. Haney, how, come it, how is it that you always seem to have exactly what I need? Mr. Haney said, <laughs> Mr. Douglas, look at it this way. How is it you always need what I got? <laughs> uh, great stuff, man. That's great, great stuff. stuff. 
Oh, speaking of Mr. Haney, I talked to Mr. Stormy yesterday. You did? I sure did. And uh, economy siding and, and, uh, and windows. And he'll mm-hmm. be at my house Monday to make the final measurements, and we're going to put on some gutter guards. There you go. Keep, keep my, my old, wore-out self off of that ladder. That's right, and you'll never have to do it again. Yep, yep. It, uh, that's some good stuff. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Looking yeah. forward to it. They do other things other than that, though. If you don't have gutters and you'd like to have gutter guards, he can put the gutters on for you first and then put the guards on top of it. That normally works good. It, <laughs> you got too many people put the guards up first. Yeah. yeah. So uh, they can put those gutters up, and they work real good, too. And uh, and if you need some windows on top of that, you know, and uh, – they can put one of the finest vinyl windows yep. you, you'd ever seen. But the best thing about the window is the trim around it. And not too many people are talented enough to put it up there to where it looks like it grew there. Right. They can do it. Uh, that makes they, a big difference, too. Well, it does, and they get it lapped the right way. Yeah. Now, I kid you not, you, you just I lose track of the times that I've gone on houses and looked at their windows, and they'd be rotted out because the nitwit that put the trim up lapped it the wrong way mm-hmm. and the water runs into the lap and gets under the metal and they have a perfectly good window that looks wonderful until it's not <laughs> and it's the only thing holding staying up there is the metal because there's no wood behind it weird but they can do that and on vinyl siding on top of that they're great at putting that up yep. make it match make it look good Make it to where it doesn't pucker when the sun hits it because they nailed it too tight. Exactly. And you'd be surprised how many people do that wrong, too. That's the only trade I know of that you're not supposed to nail the nails up tight. Yep. you got to leave them to where they wiggle in the slot. About two weeks ago, maybe maybe more than that, I was watching one of those no-no shows that you don't like for me to watch. Oh, okay. <laughs> on, on Saturday, and they were, they were doing a, a building a garage. And they were putting on vinyl siding. Mm. And they were driving those nails, I mean, till the head was puckering up the little slot that it went in. I told my wife, I said, if John saw that, he'd smack them both on the back of the head. Isn't that the truth? And and I've seen them put them up with air guns. Oh, no, no. Yeah, the the staples. Yeah. And uh, and that's just wrong. That's just wrong. That's well, all. They'll pay for it down the road, won't they? Well, that's all right. That's what keeps us in business. That's you right. Know, straight- and just, just another reason that you need to call Stormy and let him do it and do it right. Economy Siding and Gutter. They're proud sponsors. They're also uh, one of my preferred subcontractors. We, without hesitation, recommend them to anybody and everybody and uh, nobody else. There you go. So. It's economysighting.com if you want to go that route or 731-422-3828. This is uh, Tricks of the Trade with John Allen on this Saturday morning. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll be back with more. Phone lines are open at 731-891-6161 or the Victory Honda text line. You've seen how that works, 731-410-7560. We'll be right back. are lions. We bring hope where it's needed. We are a global force for good. Join the movement. Support causes that matter. Change lives. Change communities. Change the world. We can do more together than we can alone. Join in. Experience the joy of serving. Be part of the movement. Give back. Let's unite the world for good. We are lions. You can be too. Visit weserve.org.
uh, then go to fluorescent light fixtures, and now even those are out of style. Everyone's going now to LED light fixtures. And uh, and as far as that goes, there's not too many styles, I guess, that are available out there for light fixtures on just plain old things that puts light in your room. But there's one thing that is starting to come back that people are uh, using more and more of are, are what we used to call can light fixtures, where you take a, uh, a metal can that is about yay tall, and it's, it's round, it's got a housing, and you cut a hole and you put it up in your ceiling, or you put it in from the top side, which if it's a pre-existing home, you retrofit those, uh, those light fixtures. And then you'll take a bulb and you'll screw it into it, and then you'll get a trim kit of various different styles, and you'll put the trim kit on it, and there you have a light fixture that is flush with the ceiling, and will shine down. Now, those little can fixtures are good, but they don't put out a whole lot of light that broadcast. Uh, it's mainly for accent type lighting. It, it shines straight down. Maybe have one over your favorite recliner or over in a corner or maybe something shining on a, a picture or some focal point in the room. But if you come back and add enough of them, you can illuminate the room. Uh, a lot of people have them in kitchens and have them out in front of the cabinets and shining down to give just a little little more space there, uh, a little more light on your cooking space. And, and that's good. Well, can fixtures are easy to put in and uh, not too much trouble. But there's always a common problem with those fixtures if you're retrofitting a fixture. And what I mean by that is, let's say you've, your house has been there for a while, or maybe you just moved into an existing house, and you want to add some can lighting. Well, the first thing you got to figure out, if that's the case, is can you even do it? There are some things you need to watch and look for uh, to make sure that it's even possible. you got to figure out how to run your wires. you got to locate where you want to put those cans. And then, most importantly, you got to figure out exactly how you're going to put that can in. For instance, I never will forget, it's maybe 10, 12 years ago, I had a do-it-yourselfer go out there. and He says, now I'm going to go cut your holes, and all you got to do is come out here and run your wire. Just loop it from one to the other. And, but I'll do all the hard work. You just come out and run the wires and put them in. So I go out there, and uh, he does that, and he cuts the holes, and he says, I'm ready for you. Well, I go in there, and there's eight holes in his living room ceiling, where exactly where he wants them put. He says, now we got to do a little modification. I said, uh, what do you mean by that? He said, well, I cut some of those holes, and I hit the joist. I said, what'd you do that for? He said, well, I just thought, you know, if I cut the round hole, I thought I could take my finger and peck on the ceiling and see where the, the joists were. But I missed two of them. So sure enough, right in the middle of the hole was a ceiling joist. I said, well, that's, that's one problem you got. He said, I said, let me look around a little bit. So I'm sitting there with my cans ready to pop them in the hole. And I can only put them in to, uh, I think, only six of them because there's a joist in the way of the other two. And I said, well, i gotta going to have to go up in the attic now, and I'm going to have to cut that out and put a header in and block it to where i got a hole that I can slide my fixture up in. And I came back down, and I said, uh, well, we got another problem. He said, what's that? I said, you didn't tell me you had a room on top of this room. <laughs> and he said, what? So we pulled, I reached up in the ceiling and I pulled the insulation back and there right above me was a layer of plywood. And half of the room had another room on top of it. And on top of that, it was only had two by six floor joists and I'm sitting there with an eight inch can. So it's, <laughs> there's not enough room to shove that thing up in the ceiling. Right. 
So anyway, we look a little farther, and he has to do a, we have to do some modifications. Right. We have to go out and find some shallow cans, which they do exist, and uh, we brought those over. So we solved that problem. We ended up cutting out two of the joists, and it was still structurally a sound or I didn't have to do too much modification. And since it had a room on top of it, there was only insulation on about half of those holes that I had to get out of the way. And I could scoot my wire from one side to the other. Luckily, it was on the side that there wasn't a room close to the outside wall that I could go perpendicular to the joist. Otherwise, I'd have had to bore through all those oh, joists. Man. So I got lucky there. But I bring all that up because that's the way we used to do things. Um, it sounds like a relatively easy concept to put recessed lighting in, but when you got to deal with the cans and you got to deal with the joists and you got to figure out how to run your wire and you got to make sure you don't have another room on top of, above the ceiling above you. Right. Now they've made things a lot easier. Um, had a call this week from an individual that wanted to get rid of his fluorescent lighting and put up 12 recessed can lights. Wow. He wanted to illuminate his garage. And he didn't want any of those little, what's those new things now oh, on the TV? I've that, been meaning to buy one of those. <laughs> that they flare out, looks like yeah. a satellite. You're uh -huh. going to screw in the light bulb thing. Anyway, this was in an area he was doing one of them fancy shops where you got everything stuck on the wall in a certain spot and with an outline around with the outline right <laughs> in other words it's totally useless <laughs> it's all when everything's in place that's a it means type you, person means that you don't have anything to do he don't have anything to do and he don't know what to do with what he's got so yeah, anyway, okay anyway i'm glad he's i hope he's not listening <laughs> but anyway they've come out with a new way and this this is an improvement that i really like first of all the gentleman wanted to go LED lighting, which normally when you have can lights, that's a simple thing. You just unscrew the old Edison bulb, and they do have uh, LED lights that shape like the old ones, and you just screw them up in there, and it looks right. great. Well, when we got out there, we found he had another room on top of his this garage. The cans would not work. Oh, man. He had cut two holes, but he cut them in an area that everything was accessible, not knowing where the other ten were going. <laughs> but we got lucky. First of all, if you're going to do that nowadays, and this is something that do-it-yourselfers can do, while you still go up in the ceiling and cut a six-inch round hole to fit the fixture, right? you don't have to have the cans anymore. They've done away with the cans. Huh. Because since LED doesn't pull a whole lot of electricity, right. and the main reason, because LED does not put off heat, they got these little wafer lights you can buy now. Now, these lights, I kid you not, Jim, are a half inch thick and six inches round. And you can get them in various sizes. And they got little spring clips to where they are the thickness of the sheetrock that you're cutting out. Oh, and man. you literally just pop them up in the hole. Yeah. That's not the best thing, though. You don't have to have the can. All you got to do is get your wire and run. And we had that done. And then you can put dimmers on them if you want to. But you know the thing that everybody goes into now with LEDs and buying one in one store one week and getting one at another store at another yeah. is the hue of the hue. lights. Hue. And, and well, how, what type of illumination you want. You yeah. want bright white. You want kind of warm white. In other words, do you want 3K, 4K, or 5K, 5K illumination? Yeah. These little... These little wafer lights have got a little switch on the back. And all you got to do is set the switch where you want it to where they all look the same. Oh, man. So uh, we took a what would have been an extremely difficult, almost impossible job and got in and out in a day. And all we had to do is get those little half-inch wafer lights, 
pop them up in the set. Even, you don't even have to have junction boxes anymore. You just stab your wires into the back of them into a little spot made for your wires. Yeah. And, and then you stick them in the hole and they clamp down, set your switch where you want them, pop them up with a spring. And if they ever wear out, which they might, even though they got a five-year warranty on right. them, you just pull the whole fixture down, throw it in the garbage can, go get you another one, put it up. That's, that's where we are, man. We're in a throwaway world. Throwaway you know? world. But yeah. in this case, in retrofit, this is one of the few cases that actually is a good thing, in my opinion, all the way around. Works out real good, and it's easy to do, easy to easy maintenance on them. Right. And uh, you can make a great uh, difference in the illumination in a room with very little effort. Never seen those. That's amazing. Well, they, they, I, I've been buying mine out at Stanford Electric out here on uh, Airways Boulevard. Yeah. And uh, you can go out there and see the boys at the counter and uh, tell them you want some of them John Allen wafer lights. And, uh, <laughs> and and they'll know exactly what to get you out there. There you go. Yeah. One thing you do not want is to have someone come out to put a fence up at your house and find out that it is wafer thin. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? You want one that's going to be there for a while. And that's why you use, and I have used through you, West Ten Fence Company. Exactly. Yeah. True testimonial on them. Yeah. I went to a house yesterday to look at some electrical wiring on their swimming pool. And I get out there, and this lady was just so happy. <laughs> and because she had just put a brand new fence up in her backyard. Now, this was a uh, eight foot fence tall, stockade type fence. Wow. One by six dog eared plank. And they the company came in and she went on and on and on and on and I said now this is a pretty good fence and I'm thinking I need to find out who this is and see if it's who I think it is because yeah. I, I recognized a couple of key components on that fence that made me think I knew but I wasn't real sure so I let her go on and boy she was bragging said her neighbors were calling her said uh, look at the top of it it's just so nice and straight and it, it's not it's not uh, uh, what did she say? Weeble wobble is what I think she was trying to say, but she yeah. was from California. She didn't hadn't picked up the southern <laughs> lingo yet. But uh, she was really bragging on that fence. And Good. then I finally just couldn't stand it any longer. And I said, who put your fence up? said, West 10 Fence Company. I go. said, well, I wouldn't have told you a better place to go. That was the... Yep. That's the, the one that we use, and you did a good job. And I said, watch this. And I went over to her post, and I tried to move them a little bit. Mm -hmm. They used oversized posts, and they didn't wiggle. They put concrete in the hole. They didn't dry pack them. To, I mean, they just didn't put the dirt back in it and right. stop it around with a, with a <laughs> stick. And, right. and, and, but it did. It looked great. It was straight. And uh, it's, it's about cured out, and they're going to come stain it next week. And Man. uh it, it was a good job. West 10 Fence Company, I would highly recommend if anybody out there wants any kind of fence put up. Nothing else we could say that it's going to be better than what that lady said, except to tell you, you can reach them at 668-5959 or the sales department, rpennington1 at yahoo.com. We're going to take right. one quick commercial break right here, about 90 seconds. We'll continue with Tricks of the Trade. Hey Tennessee, I'm Kix Brooks. You know, I've been blessed to tour this nation from sea to shining sea. And every time that bus rolls back across the state line, I'm reminded how good we have it here in our home state. Whether you like to hunt, fish, or watch wildlife, we got our Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency to thank for it. But before you follow that red dirt road to your favorite fishing hole or hunting spot, there's one thing you need, a license. Just visit GoOutdoorsTennessee.com and you can get your license in minutes. Hi, I'm Allie. At age two, my parents knew that there was something different about me. They were told that my life would not be typical. But Autism Society of America was there to help through all of my journeys. Help make a difference and make a donation. Go to AutismSociety.org. This is Arkansas, and so is this, and this. It's a place where your adventures can lead to wonders thousands of feet below ground, or to views high above it all. Arkansas is full of things you've never seen, 
and things worth seeing again and again. So if you're looking for a place to create legendary stories or just make lasting moments, it's all right here. This is Arkansas. This is the natural state. Looking for an easy way to compare bids from contractors you can trust? Search BBB.org for the type of work you need, then request a quote. Just click Get Quotes. You'll soon receive estimates from BBB accredited businesses. Businesses which meet BBB standards of trust. Peace of mind is just one search away. BBB. Start with trust. Headlining, lights, offering anything vehicle related, big or small, come see us guys. Hires, tires are big right now. We're doing discounts on tires, we're doing discounts on hitches. If you're in the market for towing accessories for your campers, come see us. Fifth wheels, goosenecks, bumper hitches, wiring, we got you. Look for the monster truck, Jackson Off Road, right off 45 Bypass, 668 8084. Attention Medicare recipients and anyone turning 65, Medicare has approved new benefits not included with original Medicare and older Medicare Advantage plans. You may not be getting all of the benefits you're entitled to, including in-home aids, telephone appointments with your doctors, home-delivered meals and prescriptions. These benefits may be available and it's a free call to enroll. The new plans may also offer free eyeglasses, free hearing aids, free wellness visits, and gym memberships. Call the Medicare Benefits Line now. It's easy. Call 800-747-1186. 800-747-1186. Find out if you're eligible for new benefits like meal and prescription delivery, in-home aids, and telemedicine. Some plans may have a $0 monthly premium or zero copays for big out-of-pocket savings. Not all Medicare Advantage plans are alike. The new plans have more benefits for many people. Call 800-747-1186. 800-747-1186. Eight hundred seven four seven one one eight six. Saturday morning in West Tennessee, no better place to be right here at 93.1 with John Allen's Tricks of the Trade. We've been talking about screen doors and blowny sandwiches and wafer lights and uh, all kinds of good things this morning. Yeah, we have. Now I'm going to tell you how to ruin a perfectly good hardwood floor. Buy a dog. <laughs> Well, that's, or a cat. Yeah, that's another one. But, but uh, you know, before we get back on the wood, you want to yeah. talk about something metal? Yes, I do. And I'm glad you reminded me of that because my memory is not what it used to be. It's been all of, what, 15 seconds since that, we discussed that? Could that be, right? you know. Yeah, and speaking of metal, if you if you want metal roof, if you need a metal building or whatever the case may be, you don't have to run all over the countryside trying to find one. Just drive out the three-way. Exactly right. They, there's a fine place out there called Quality Outdoor Products. Yep. And uh, don't be like me, think it was a lawnmower place until you found out something differently. <laughs> you went they, out there to get your ATV fixed. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, they got all kinds of metal products for putting metal buildings up or roofing. You know, maybe you're a little nostalgic like I am from time to time and you want to just put a metal roof on your house or your yeah. cabin or whatever you might have just to hear that rain hitting it on a hot August afternoon. But uh, you can get it out there and... You don't have to worry about the stock, cause they just make it for you right there. They got all, they got several different styles of tin. They got de several different types of moldings and companion pieces that go with it. But it all starts out looking the same way. It's just a flat piece of metal. <laughs> and once you pick out what you want, they run it through this little machine. It's got a lot of buttons on it. I saw it. Yeah. And it looks kind of complicated, and it doesn't matter, cause I don't have to operate it. <laughs> and and they'll punch these buttons, and then they'll shove a piece of flat metal in one end, and it comes out all crinkled up like you want it on the other end. The color you want it, they got dozens of colors to choose from. And so if you want a special uh, color on your building, they can do it. If you want a regular tin roof or maybe you want a stand and seam metal roof, mm -hmm. they can do it. Maybe you just need a pole barn or some place to put something in your backyard to put your stuff in yep. they can do it out there at quality outdoor products and uh, they're geared for the homeowners and the contractors you can get all the stuff you need to make it complete get the screws the same color as your metal you can get the caulking that matches the color of your metal 
You can get everything right there. Just walk up and tell the guys at the counter what you want. If you don't know what you want, they can design it for you. Absolutely. They can uh, set you down at a little table there, and you can look over the computer screen and start punching a few buttons and design your own building. Put the doors and the windows exactly where you want them, not where they tell you to. Right. And then they'll print it out, and you uh, just tell them to put it on the books, and they'll get everything pre-cut and put together there for you. And all you got to do is bring up, come back out there with a the trailer and pick it up. Yeah, or if you like, they'll package it, put it all together, the roofing, the components, the trim. They'll have it ready for you to take with you, as John said, or they'll deliver it to your work site if that's what you need. They will, and Best they'll even put it up for you, too. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. 888-485-5372, Quality Outdoor Products, one of our great sponsors here on Tricks of the Trade. We have about uh, seven minutes or so left in this Saturday's uh, goings-on, so what else can we get into? Well, I've had about a dozen calls this week, people complaining about a water bill they're getting in the mail. Said their water bills have been unusually high, hmm. and they can't figure it out. And in two cases, I've been out to their house, and uh, we found the problem. But I thought, well, some of this stuff is so easy, I'm going to pass a little tip on for people to check things out. Okay. If you feel like your, your uh, water bill is a little high and you think you may have a leak, before you call a plumber, or just get all excited about something tragic, go out to your water meter. Take the lid off of it and pull the lid back on that little dial where you see the, the arrow and all there. And right in the middle of that meter is a little triangle. And if you have any water being used, wasted, or whatever whatsoever, that little dial will move. It'll continue to spin. That means you are using water. Well, if it's spinning, and in your opinion, everything in the house is turned off, then you can go start looking for a leak. So put the lid back on your water meter. Don't leave it open because some people have been known to be walking down the street and step in that hole. Fall off in one of Next them. thing you know, you're getting a nice little... Uh, <laughs> subpoena or a paper being served to you that uh, for liability that you got to file on your insurance. But anyway, go back in the house and start looking for the source. Go to every water source you have. Look for your faucets. See if you got anything dripping. But if you don't see anything, go on to the next one. Check your bathtub out. If you don't see anything dripping, don't worry about it. Go to the next one. Go to the outside faucets. If nothing's dripping, go to the next one. Get to the toilets. That's where most of the people use and lose most of their water. That little flapper down there will tell the tale. Sometimes maybe your, your cutoff, your uh, fluid master, your ball cock, whatever you want to call it in there, it seeps water a little bit, and it goes up to your overflow tube and runs over. And if you want to know... If you've got a leak in your toilet, here is the easiest, cheapest way to do it. If you have this in your cabinet, pull it out. If you don't, just go get you some of it at the grocery store, and that's food coloring. Mm -hmm. Take a little few drops of food coloring and drop it in the tank of your toilet, not the bowl, the tank, to where it turns the water, whatever color it is. Maybe it's red, maybe it's blue, yeah. whatever. Drop a few drops of that in there, let it turn blue, and then walk out of the room. If you want to come back in a couple of hours and look in the bowl, if the water in the bowl is the same color as the water in the tank, you got a leak. Right. So at that point, you either change out your flapper or change out your, your fluid master, your ball cock, whatever it might be, and you can stop that leak. And it, you'd be surprised how a little bitty, teeny tiny seepage of water will add up uh, on your water bill. Because remember, you're going to pay more for the water going out of the house, the wastewater, yep. than what the water costs coming into the house. That's now, amazing. go figure that yeah. out. Uh, don't get me, don't that, get me started. I, I know, I know. But the thing of it is, if you stop that leak, you don't, you're not paying for the wastewater and you're not paying for the water. So your utility bill will drop. 
And most of the time, most people's problems are in their toilets. So just might want to keep that in mind. Is it usually usually a function of the of the, the cylinder or the ball cock or not or sometimes it's just the flapper is worn out and it's not seating It's properly. just the flapper a lot of time. Used to when they had those heavy duty flappers, you could take and tape a quarter to the top of them uh-huh. to weight them down. It'd be okay. They can't do that anymore. They just uh, I could believe I could set a brick on some of them, but they're so <laughs> cheaply made they just won't seal good. And uh, Corky makes a real good flapper. Mm-hmm. They're those little red ones, right. but they make the heavy duty ones. I've seen though; they're yeah, weighted, aren't they? They're, they're weighted a little more. They they work a whole lot better. And Fluid Master is a is a good ball cock to put in there. It's easy to adjust. Biggest thing I see go wrong with those is is that when they start seeping, if your flapper's good, it'll raise the water level till the water starts going at your overflow tube. And if right. you see that happening and you can't adjust that ball cock to stop the water just throw it in the garbage can put you another one in there okay so keep that in mind interesting yeah it's amazing how much what looks like just a little bit of drip coming out of that sink can add up over a month's time yeah, i'm telling you to it gallons and gallons and gallons of water mm-hmm. so, yeah crazy crazy we're about a minute out you got anything else you want to lay on us right quick yeah right quick hardwood floors I went I went furniture shopping last weekend while I was out of town. Yeah. Got me a new lazy boy and a sofa that matches first time in my life. <laughs> and uh of course we're having to wait months for it yeah. to get here. Yeah. Got to put the right kind of fabric on it and stuff like that. Of course. You know. Had a one of those inferior desecrators I mean interior <laughs> decorators talk to me about it. And uh but when you go home and you go moving things around be careful, people. You can have a beautiful floor, and you can ruin it if you start scooting furniture around on it that hadn't been moved in a while. Yep. Those little felt feet that are on the bottom of those legs, if one of those breaks off towards just the metal, it'll scratch that floor. You better believe Big it. Big time scratch. So you check your it. chairs, check your sofas, anything that scoots on that floor, and make sure those little protectors are in place. If not, four or five bucks, you can replace them all and be done with it and protect those floors. I hear that music. That's the music. I got to shut up and get out of here. It's about that time. See you next week. See you later. With more Tricks of the Trade with John Allen. All right. Take care.